thank you, Zoom, and uh, your excellencies. Uh, of course, your excellency Louis Dego Monsambo, uh, your excellency just Joseph uh, Sidi, <laughs> your excellency Louis uh, Kosena, your excellency Louis uh, Schmidt. So, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, distinguished guests uh, and, and friends and uh, colleagues uh, from CCG, also from our media circle, uh, embassy representatives. It's really a, a, a great honor for me, actually, uh, uh, to welcome you all on behalf of the Center for China and Globalization. And uh, on the occasion of this 10th anniversary of Pacific Alliance, and uh, so CCG is very pleased to co-host this today's uh, event, this Pacific Alliance, represented by four distinguished uh, uh, ambassadors here uh, in the event. And also, we are featuring our Pacific Alliance ambassadors uh, to China and, and, and uh, from all those four member states, from Colombia, Mexico, Peru, and Chile. So this is indeed a great opportunity to learn more about the alliance, but also explore common opportunities for China and for the uh, black region at large. So exchanges between our peoples have, got, have a long history, actually, dating back to the 16th century, or even longer, and then the, the, the middle of the Ming Dynasty, we have the silk, porcelain, and cotton, yarrow have been shipped, to large countries like Peru and Mexico. But also in return, Latin American corn, potato, and sunflower, and also all those uh, products has actually uh, gained popularity in China. Today, China features as a key trading partner for Latin American and Caribbean countries, both as a source of imports and destiny of exports. China's trade with the Black region has grown drastically, dramatically, actually, consistently over the last two decades, multiplying 26 fold. Despite COVID 19 pandemic and its unfortunate impact on global commerce, trade relations between China and the Black has continued to experience positive growth. In the first half of 2021, our bilateral trade was about 200. 200 billion, almost 203 billion, a year on year increase of 45.6%. So, in the wake of the pandemic, investment from China has also continuously flown to Latin American and Caribbean countries. China direct investment uh, in Latin American countries reached 10.38 billion US dollars from this January to May a year year increase of 49, 40%. This number exhibits the great resilience and future potential of China and the Latin American countries. Uh, as within the black region, the four members of the Pacific Alliance know for their openness and free trade and investment liberalization is actually, as I'll just uh, the uh, moderator has said, you know, those uh, four countries actually represent the eighth largest economy in the world. That's, that's very impressive <laughs> if you talk about G10, here is one of them. And uh, so uh, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru have also emerged as the key recipient of China's FDI. <clears throat> in 2020, Chile, Colombia, and Mexico taking an account of about 76, 8.5% of China's direct investment and the 93.7, 9.7% employees in the same entire region. So this is really very impressive uh, uh, cooperation between the countries of, uh, of uh, Pacific Alliance and, and China. So moreover, we also have a mutual interest in promoting from inclusive and, and also impactful multilateralism, especially in the Pacific region. For instance, China has interested in joining the CPTPP, and we all know that from Pacific Alliance countries, we already have uh, Mexico and, uh, and Chile being the Pacific, <laughs> being the CPTPP members already. Uh, so this May, actually, Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi congratulated this, the 10th anniversary of commemoration of the Pacific Alliance. This is really significant, represents a very a uh, strong economic uh, alliance that uh, is, uh, is, uh, have gone through 10 years of its achievement. 
In his address, he underscored that China stands ready to deepen mutual and bilateral cooperation with Pacific Alliance and its member states. Continue to cooperate with Latin America and the Caribbean countries in various fields such as the combating ep epidemic, dentistry, the concept of a common community with a shared future in a new era featuring quality, mutual benefit, innovation, openness, and benefiting peoples. So Latin and China have been benefiting from their complementary in economic sectors. Latin American region is also an advocate and key partner in China's Belt and Road Initiative, and 19 Latin countries have signed a BRI agreement with China. The economic ties on both sides has been further strengthened under the Belt and Road framework, and BRI paves the way for greater economic growth and expanding international cooperation for the Latin American countries and also its business. During the 2005 and the 2020, China has carried out 138 infrastructure projects worth 19.09 billion, as well as generated over 600 jobs in Latin countries. Out of the four members of the Pacific Alliance, Peru and Chile both uh, signatory to BRI, as well as Colombia and Mexico have closed follow the initiative, for instance, the Golgoda Metro project. Based on the common perspective of mutual respect and win-win cooperation, I believe Pacific Alliance is in line with the BRI will maintain stable and sustainable development. Improving the quality and infrastructure, energy and connectivity project and the BRI framework in Latin American countries is definitely good news for, for the region. Meanwhile, China and Latin countries are also expanding the scope of their cooperation, such as e-commerce, public health, finance, and, and service sector. This enhancement of our bilateral cooperation still needs more innovation and dynamism on both sides. So I, I'm very, very honored and very pleased to <laughs> welcome our four uh, distinguished ambassador. I'm, I'm very confident that through our you know, close cooperation, mutual understanding, and trust, and of course, China and Pacific Alliance, and also the LAC region, will jointly build uh, our common interest together, and we are really going to make a more and more uh, important uh, role to the prosperity and also to the cooperation with our with the with our regions and also with our countries and with the world. So, with that, I look forward to hear more from our distinguished ambassadors and. Uh, Really, once again, thank you all very much.